Jones. Where is Beth? Beth is in the audience and has a question for the senator. All right. Hi, Senator. Thank Hi, you for Pam. coming. Um, I'm standing um, with Swami Dayananda. She is a Hindu Hi, monk from Yogaville Community Serving with Union Hill Baptist Church and Friends of Buckingham for Environmental and Climate Justice in Virginia. I come from Southeast Louisiana, where we have one of the fastest eroding coastlines in the world. And not far inland, some of the, in some of the poorest communities, you'll find a long line of petrochemical companies. Families have been flooded with deadly poisons for generations. There's toxins in the air and the water that has caused so much illness that some folks call our corner of the country Cancer Alley. Ecological devastation and the climate crisis is happening all around us. And the poor and marginalized are always the first to be hit. What is your plan to ensure that everyone has a right to clean water, air, land, and to defend our environment? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Can we start by saying that environmental issues are poor people's issues? Because it's critical to stop and acknowledge that. You know, I've been working on different parts of environmental plans. And the very first one I did was about what a president can do, and I love saying this, what a president can do all by herself. Uh, the kinds of things that don't have to go through Congress. So for example, the first day that I'm sworn in, I will put in place a moratorium that on all of our federal lands, on all of our national parks, there'll be no new drilling, no new mining for petrochemicals, and offshore, no more. We're not gonna do that. When I rolled that out, the very first place I went was to coastal South Carolina, where poor people, where working people, where people in struggling communities are on the front lines trying to stop offshore drilling. They make their lives and their livelihoods from that water. And they say, just, you know, all it's gonna take is one spill, one accident, one mistake, and it'll wipe them out for generations to come. That indeed, the very fact of doing it, the waste produced by this and the changes, they don't want to see it. And the hardest part is their voice doesn't get heard. Not in a world that is full of, let's listen to the lobbyists. Let's listen to the people who can make the big campaign contributions. Let's listen to the folks who can hire bought and paid for experts. You know, when you've got a government that works for a thin slice at the top, a government that works for those who can show up with plenty of money and doesn't work for anyone else, that is corruption, pure and simple, and we need to call it out for what it is. So I'll tell you this, I'll make this promise, and that is I am in this fight so that this government doesn't just work for those at the top. Here's the good news, I've got the biggest anti-corruption plan since Watergate. Here's the bad news. We need the biggest anti-corruption plan <laughs> since Watergate, but no one needs it more than the poor, than the people whose voices don't get heard, than the people whose communities get destroyed. No one needs it more than the people whose livelihood is taken away, whose clean air is taken away, whose water is destroyed and undrinkable. And that's the fight. We have to be in. We have to be in that fight morally, we have to be in that fight economically, and we have to be in that fight politically every single day. Count me in on that one. Reverend Theo Harris. So in 1968, when the Poor People's Campaign was launched by Dr. 